Uh, hi, guys. I'm here with uh, Robert F. Riley, the, the good Bob Riley. He's an interventionalist. Um, uh, we, you know, I, I just got to tell you, I was listening to the case over there and mm -hmm. listening to the discussion, and we're going to have a similar discussion mm -hmm. here. One thing I've learned from this guy uh, in the time we've spent together is that CTO PCI makes you a better interventionalist when it's not a CTO. Let's go through the history and the images real quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, next, 77-year-old immigrant from Iraq, just a beautiful man. He was a dentist uh, in Iraq for 30-plus years, actually walked away from everything, uh, brought his family over here during one of the, uh, one of the, uh, uh, the wars over there. Moderate AI, 60% EF, risk factors for heart disease, presented with new onset angina, stress test showed clear LAD so uh, ischemia, and he was referred for uh, cardiac catheterization. Next. So that's what he's got. It appeared to be a CTO. We're going to show you more images. Go next. So it appeared to be a, at least a chronic stenosis lesion, probably a microchannel. But let's get off that. Can you go to our images? Can you go to our first images, uh, Sydney? I want to incidentally, we have Sydney in the lab, Brittany, mm -hmm. Tracy. I mean, this is the all-star crew. Mm -hmm. And in the orange lead over my shoulder, that's Rebecca Murphy from Sky. She's watching our live cases. She and I work on the live case committee there, and she's taking copious notes. So i got to do a good job. <laughs> and Robert Schwartzstein is our anesthesiologist. Okay, so this is our first shot. Go next. And Robert, you made a comment. I said... All right, now on our first images with our six French catheters from several days ago, it doesn't appear That's right. as if it appears like a CTO, but now, what did you say about overpowering the lesion? Yeah, so one of the things we saw on the first initial images is that there, you know, there's some to and fro on the retrogrades. There's a very large epicardial, as you can see coming off the RPDA that connects to the apex, which is a very common epicardial pattern for LED CTOs. And what we saw in the diagnostic is there was a little bit of a to and fro as you got towards the caps, meaning the beginning and distal end of the lesion itself. That to and fro pattern can oftentimes mean that there's competing flow there, anagrade versus retrograde, especially when there's such a big epicardial there. So that gave me the sense that I wonder if this could be what we call a functional CTO, meaning it looks like a CTO, but actually there is some microchannels there enough to actually give you that to and fro pattern there. Once we got an actual eight French guide, obviously much larger ID, able to um, generate much larger force and put a lot more contrast in, we can see that actually even with anagrade shots, it's really not actually closed. And so um, being able to generate those higher pressures allows you to actually get through those tight spots where your diagnostic catheters, your fives and six, may not be able to generate those kinds of pressures. So it changed the game for us. Okay, now, I said at the beginning that Dr. Riley always tells me that, this Robert Riley, uh, always tells me that doing CTOs makes you a better operator when it's not a CTO. Go forward, because this is going to be extremely important here, because while we were able to get a wire down, play it, please. We were able to get a wire down. Go next. I think that's the... Well. There. So we got the wire down through this lesion, but go next. And we did a retrograde, never an antegrade uh, right. injection, always a retrograde. Okay. We couldn't get anything past that area there. We, we tried to remodel the plaque with the balloon dilation, but that's as far as our equipment will go. Yeah. So now we totally used CTO mm -hmm. technique. We used end hole catheters, we used a Corsair, we tried to spin our way down, go forward. And now this is as far as we could get it. So this is our end hole catheter. Which one is this? This is the a Carabelle. Carabel. So we got it there. We know we're intraluminal and then what we did was go next. We could only get it that far, so then we put a rotofloppy wire through that, and we pecked on it. And at first, it didn't give, but then using rotational atherectomy, it gave very well. So while we work, we're going to start working in the interest of time. I heard Catherine Harrington always makes a great argument for surgery when it's appropriate. Robert uh, Bob Riley, the 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 surgeon, the evil Bob Riley, uh, always makes a good argument for surgery. <laughs> but um, Bob Riley and K uh, Catherine, why isn't this a single vessel mammary to LED? Well, certainly both of these last two cases that we've seen, we we consider for a uh, hybrid approach. Or no, this one would be hybrid, but both of them would be uh, discussed a robot uh, Lima LED, which 
say, the first patient who's refused surgery are often somewhat more uh, amenable to that. Um, I mean, this is single vessel. I think you this is totally reasonable. Neither of these patients are diabetic. Okay. You know, I think Down 16. stents are, are reasonable in this one. But, you know, I, gotta, I know it's reasonable to do what we're doing, but I will tell you it was a little challenging, and I think based on the expertise in your hospital or in your, what if you don't have a CTO operator? If you don't have 20. someone like Robert Riley here doing this or a CTO operator, uh, then gosh, this seems to me like a mammary mort. Wouldn't a mammary be a good idea? Or Robert Riley, Bob we, Riley? We come to the spider, please. I mean, both, yeah, yeah. this is a juicy Just target. So, so <laughs> I, I don't think we should write the surgeons off completely, but I think this deserves an attempt at CTO technique. That's where we are. And if something more. fails or you can't do it or your hospital can't do it, then I think a mid mini af approach to a lima, I don't know, robotic or not, but I think it's the second choice. We don't do open gallbladders anymore, so I don't think we should do limas first. Yeah, but it is also important to say that even though this was a subtotal technique, the idea that you guys did great angiography, really studied the films beforehand is very, very important because sometimes they look like subtotal lesions, sometimes they look like there's a microchannel, and there's actually a little bridging collateral that's fooling you. So you really want to study the films very carefully here. Bob, I haven't heard you. Talk to me. Well, I think this is a, a, a great approach, especially with the microchannel. It gets a little bit more complex if it really is a CTO. And then, the, like you said, you have to have a CTO operator. So if I um, didn't, what if I don't have a CTO? What if well, I have someone that has done, we don't have anyone that's gone through any hybrid CTO, and then uh, the best they can do <laughs> is poke and hope or hit and hope. Doesn't a mammary sound like a good idea here? So, so a mammary is a great idea, and uh, it's hard to go wrong with the mammary. I think the one thing for the audience that's interesting about this case is the patient's son is a physician, and he was very strong in his opinion that patients should go for surgery. We, we actually had to sit with him as a team and talk to him about we can't hear in here. Sometimes the doctor informed consent is even harder than just the random patient. Take that to the dump bag. I think, Dave, your point is that you need to understand your expertise of your own personal skill as well as the other people around you, how much you're going to uh, push to try to open this. Uh, if you got the wire down like you guys did, but you weren't able to do anything else or you didn't have microcatheters to be able to get across, you, you want to make sure you stop before you take away a good option from the patient. So if the idea is you're going to try to stent the LED, but you can't deliver equipment there, make sure you stop it before you screw it up and you have to do an emergency bypass. Let the patient go electively for a bypass. I think Catherine and Bob would like that a lot better and uh, move forward from there. So uh, just before we, uh, just one question to the panel. I mean, we're talking about your capability and your surgeons and your operator would be to consider taking dual injections at the time of the diagnostic cath. Um, you can potentially get radial access on the other side and take dual injections, and I will help your CTO operator to plan um, in advance. And you saw that I did that. You saw the minute on the diagnostic, you saw the minute we realized this was a CTO or at very minimum a chronic stenosis lesion with, with robust collaterals, we then uh, converted over to dual injections. And I think, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a, uh, it's a little concerning uh, to, to convert that. over to we dual injections. We that we were using. Thank you because uh, we, had our, we, went, we were radial first, we went transradial, and now we're sticking the groin or at least the other radio. We've already given heparin, et cetera. So, uh, but that shouldn't deter you. I think you'd be very careful with your, uh, with your diagnostic images or uh, with your stick of the uh, contralateral side. But I think that's an important point. Was that Benita or who was it made that point? It was Nadia. Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Nadia. Oh, she's from U of M. She's from Michigan. Of course she made a beautiful uh, comment. Yeah, I think going into that, uh, doing those contralateral injections mm -hmm. is important. Absolutely. So you'll notice a few things here, just, just some other random points here. So uh, guide support, obviously huge in CTO PCI. And you might say, well, Robert, that guide looks a little short. 
And in fact, it is short, but you'll notice that if we'd gone to a four, that would have gotten really close to the ostium of that LED. And you know, you know, you know, there's disease right there at the ostium. You know, you know, So you know what did that. we do to help our lives? So what we did was we were going to do it anyway, right? We were going to wire that circuit just for protection anyway. That also gives us a little bit more of an anchor to bring that in. And what it allows us to do is engage the proximal cap safely, meaning that the guide can still be a little bit hanging in the left main like that, but it also gives us a good trajectory, meaning that anchor wire allows us to point towards the LED so that we don't have to do a lot of manipulations with different wire shapes and things like that. It allowed us to engage the cap relatively straight on there. So that's important. Then what we did was once we got the wire across, we started with just a 135 Corsair Pro. It's very standard uh, microcatheter that used for anti-grade wire escalation. Um, and I think it's important too to talk a little bit about what the plan was to start with. We knew, we looked at it and we said, you know, there might be a microchannel. It was short, there was unambiguous caps, there was a good distal landing zone for ADR if we got subintimal, and we had a really good retrograde channel. So we didn't just say, oh, it's a microchannel, I'm just gonna wire escalate. We said, okay, we're gonna start with a wire escalation strategy, but if we get subintimal, we have a really good ADR option, and if things go awry with ADR, which we know they do in 20 to 30% of the time, even in the best hands, um, that we had a good retrograde option. So we were set up to do three different things um, right from the, right the get-go. And um, all of it is, is sired from the, the knowledge of, uh, of CTO-PCI. Yeah. You know, it just really is uh, very helpful. So then what we were able to do is we did do wire escalation. We were able to get down, but microcatheter wouldn't pass. And the algorithm for wire across gear won't go uh, for CTO PCI applies here. And that algorithm starts with just getting better guide support. In this case, we were a little bit stuck in terms of using a guide extension because the left main was so short and maybe we could have used it a little bit to come out. Um, did you just I, see that? I did. Still getting stuck yeah, we're still uh, where we rode out and it popped through. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, since we're just ballooning now, mm -hmm. Uh, any questions from the panel? I want to be respectful of what Alok and Bimmel are doing. Are they ready to go next door to show kind of where they're at? How far do you want me to take Because what this we up? are going to do is go just a little bit further, because you'll notice on those spider shots, we didn't have as much flow downstream as we wanted. So what we want to go is a little bit further and actually just massage this down here, and this will be fine. So I'm not going to go nuts here. This is a 3-5 balloon. I'm just going to go 6 here, because so again, I just want to massage that little can you, vessel. Can you explain the massage again to us? Like yes, sir. There's some control <laughs> that. Like that. It, it just, is, yeah, so there used I, to be... I'm oh. going to interrupt you one second. There used to be a gentleman in Washington who would pulse the inflator device, and he said, I'm massaging the lesion. So I don't think that's actually happening. You're delivering pressure to the balloon. It's expanding. God knows what the tissue is experiencing. I get a massage. I'm not sure the tissue does. So <laughs> I think that's a fair, as always, Mort, that's a really fair point. Um, all I can tell you is, is that what we, what we try to do, and there's a lot of spasm like that, and CTO PCI like this with some negative remodeling, we're just trying to open up that vessel because it's unclear if we're going to have to stent it or not. So maybe I should just use a different word, something that's Check. actually yeah, happening instead right of... So I like, I like that idea, but I think you will stent that. I doubt you're going to be able to get away from not stenting, right? Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 and imaging would tell you for sure, right? Put like a spider view, please. If we, were to, if we were to employ that method, we would know for sure. Because um, I think as you, as you look at that cranial shot, as it comes down, as you start to bend down, I think that all area is okay, but everything proximal to that obviously is I do it right there. I do it right there. So yeah. two so comments. Sometimes uh, you have trouble, like you said, getting the microcatheter down and switching out for a rota floppy wire. Uh, recently, you know, with the 1.0 balloon, that's just become a lot easier in terms of uh, that will sometimes pass when the microcatheter won't. Uh, and that's really helped me in these in these cases a lot. And then the other thing I just want to point out is, you know, you see that the much. operators here are, are doing almost one-to-one -one, uh, sizing to make sure there's really good stent expansion, which is incredibly important in a heavily calcified lesion. Okay. So one, one other uh, point, uh, when you're using these NC balloons, and you have uh, a very short left main, yeah, you want to kind of slowly tease. Uh, I'm losing my circ wire. Mm -hmm. Let's get that back out there. You want to slowly tease the catheter out. Uh, we must be really wrapped here. Yeah. Tell you what, I'm going to hold the circ wire yes, uh, while you uh, do the other because we're really wrapped. So, uh, but you want to tease that balloon back so it doesn't uh, deep throat the guide catheter in. Yeah, we're really wrapped. Okay, you got it. Good job. Uh, so that's just one of those things that you don't want to make take uh, success and turn it into a left main dissection. Yeah. 
Uh, another thing, you know, we, we, are, we do have the wire down, but remember, at the end of that LED is a big epicardial. And so what we don't want to do is let even a workhorse wire sit there and slam down that thing. So look at that. There's dissection down there. And that's why we're not getting a lot of distal flow um, because that's heavily calcified. We did take an NC balloon around that yeah. bend. So all we need to do is just tack that up and everything will be okay. Yeah. And I we still got all our diags, which think, is great. What size? I think uh, is a 3.5 going to be aggressive, or what do you well, think? Well, I, I would say a 3.5 is probably, well, I tell you what, why don't we do this? Um, panel, what do you guys think? What do you want uh, to start to stent that distal vessel with? I would give uh, IC nitro, IVUS that after the nitro, and, and then resize it should again. IVUS it, Rob? Let's hypothesize that you couldn't IVUS. Let's just hypothesize that. Then what would you do? Just, just, just work with me here. <laughs> so you take a wild... So you, you put it, guess, it's right. probably a 3.0 stent distally, and then you want a 3.5 or bigger stent proximally. Fantastic. Okay. So I like your style. Just okay. We're going to go next you door. You made me say it. We're, we're going to go next door. The reason uh, he said just, you know, uh, <laughs> hypothetically, if we couldn't IVUS, they just called for the IVUS uh, device next door. I don't know why we don't have two. Let, let's see what we did. Go back. So uh, I I interesting. Go back a picture, Sydney. So... I really love having Rob here. He's per closing this and everything. Go back a picture. So this is what we got. Uh, we Ivis so it. Clean the groin with. And there were no um, no uh, distal dissections, but very proximal. And those guys got the Ivis machine again. But uh, hold on just one second with that. Uh, at the proximal, it was all dissected from the roto. So what we did was we didn't do anything distal, but, uh, but post-dilate the stent. And then proximal, the disease extended all the way up to and including uh, the left main. And so we stented, we wired the circ, and we did a crossover stent from main to AD, overlapped the prox AD stent and the mid AD stent by a couple of millimeters. And what you see is really what I think is a spectacular result. We got brisk flow, but then when it gets to the apex, you can see the flow's a little slow, but the reason is, uh, and Rob, jump in here, go forward, yep. please. And the reason is you'll see here, there is a monster epicardial off the RPDA you can see here, but you see, as we do dual injections, they connect, everything's all good, we have all the branches. All right. So it's simply out being out-competed at the very distal edge um, by, by um, the epicardial, and that's likely because we had a little bit of uh, no reflow after, those, after rotational atherectomy. That'll all clean up, That'll all good. That'll clean up, yeah. And he's got everything I, he needs. I think uh, we, we, we spent a, a fair amount of time, I think it's important, we spent a, spent a fair amount of time with pharmacology. Mm -hmm. We gave vasodilator drugs, adenosine, et cetera. Uh, and made the uh, antegrade flow as brisk as possible. You can see all the way down the septum, the septum's getting good brisk flow, but it's just at the apex where yeah. that epicardial collateral is. And we, we demonstrated that we were in the true lumen and there was, no sh you know, there was no problems in terms of distal dissections with IVUS. It was a lovely picture. We could see that everything was preserved. And so again, after giving pharmacology there, we know exactly what's going on right. based on the imaging. And we don't feel like we have to chase this further downstream because again, we know there's nothing like hematoma, there's no dissections or anything because we had such nice HD images. Without having that and without having this dual angiography, we'd be left kind of wondering if there's a problem. With all of this, we know that everything's all good. And this yeah. will clean up. This Absolutely. will all be uh, really nice. This is uh, typical uh, sort of chronic stenosis uh, slash CTO uh, intervention and th I guess for me, the take home message is what you and I were talking about on the way over here in the car, prep yourself for success. Do all the preparation work, dual injections and all this, uh, make sure your guide catheters are fitting in nicely to ensure success. Absolutely. All right, you're gonna close up, uh, you're gonna- Sure am. Perfect. Thank you again. Thank you guys. Thank you guys.